We are teaching this sermon series on spiritual authority. Again, this is part three, and tonight's message is entitled, Exercising Your Authority. You have authority. There is a biblical revelation that we need to get tonight, and that revelation is that you are empowered with authority from on high. Somebody say amen. 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 Now, we've been talking a lot about faith, and we spent weeks and weeks and weeks talking about Faith, you know, the just shall live by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. We're not driven by our emotions. We're driven by faith. Come on. It's not to say that we don't have an emotional life because there's a lot of passion in the life of a believer. It's just that we do not let emotion, we do not let circumstance, we do not let what our eyes see and our ears hear determine what the Word of God says. We live by the Word of God. Come on, somebody. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. And so if you're going to live by faith, faith takes you up to the place where you must address spiritual authority. The fact that we do have spiritual authority in our life, unless you have the kind of faith that just says, I'm going to wait for God to do something. I don't know what to do. I hope God knows what to do. So I'll just hang on until God does something. But that's not biblical. That's not what God or how God wants us to operate or live our lives. God says, no, I've invested a lot in you. I want you to start walking out what I have put on the inside of you, which is power. I wish, I wish the church was with me tonight, which is power and anointing. He says, I've given you my word. I've given you my anointing. I've called you my children. Now let's walk this thing out with some authority. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, if you're going to talk about spiritual authority, then you come to the revelation that we are ambassadors. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20 says, now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. That's a very powerful revelation. We are ambassadors for Christ. An ambassador is someone who represents their home country. They're living in a different country, but they represent their home country. They speak for their king. They represent or promote the policies of their king. They represent the culture of the kingdom. So even though they're living in a foreign land, they, their citizenship, their culture, their language, their, their uh, priorities are all about the home country. Did you know your citizenship is in heaven? Yeah, we're in the world, we're not of the world. And the Bible says that we are an ambassador for Christ. And as an ambassador, you are invested with power and authority. You have that right now. Whether you know it or not, you have power and authority in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So when you speak for the king, you speak with power. You speak with authority. When you promote the policies of the king, you promote with power and authority. When you represent the culture of the kingdom, you do so with power and authority. Hallelujah. Say it with me, I have... Power, power and authority, authority. In, Christ Jesus. in Christ Jesus. Now this was always God's plan. This is the way God designed things in the beginning. If we go way back to Genesis chapter 1, we see that God created man. Genesis chapter 1 verse 27. And so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Verse 28. And God blessed them. God blessed the male, God blessed the female. God blessed them and said to them, here's the blessing, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over everything that is in the earth, in the sea, in the sky, on the land. Have dominion, subdue it, have dominion. In other words, rule over it. That's what dominion means. Have authority over it, rule over it. So that is God's plan for his creation, that's us, in the earth. Now we threw it away, we gave it away because the, we believe the word of the devil rather than the word of God. Uh, I heard a preacher this past weekend say something really wonderful. He says, you know, sometimes we think 
God, uh, why did you put us in the, in the garden to be tormented by the serpent, to be tormented by the devil? But that's not, that was not God's plan. He kicked the devil out first. The devil ended up here in this earthly realm. And then he put man in the earthly realm, not to be tormented of the devil, but to torment the devil. We're, we're the ones who have authority over him. He's not the one that has authority over us. Hallelujah. From day one, we had authority over him because God blessed them and says, listen, I'm going to bless you that you subdue everything, that you have dominion over everything. And that, that included the devil. Ah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. So when Jesus came, he restored the kingdom. He restored what the first Adam threw away, the second Adam restored. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all, everybody say, all, all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that spirits are subject to you. Spirits are subject to you but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. There it is, right there, so clearly. He has given us authority to trample on the devil. We have authority over all the power of the enemy, and spirits are subject to the believer. Amen. There it is, right there. Amen. Jesus said it. Jesus said, this is what I'm doing for you. I am restoring. I am establishing the kingdom once again. And I'm going to operate it through you. Now this is such a powerful concept for the believer. And Paul in the book of Ephesians laid out jot and tittle, laid out point after point. The whole book of Ephesians is all about the spiritual authority of the believer. If we skip back to chapter 6 at the end of the book we would see that we're in a battle we don't wrestle against flesh and blood but we do wrestle against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness of this age and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places so we do wrestle with them but I want you to know not one of them has power over us not one of them has authority over us we go all the way back to Ephesians chapter 1, and you go ahead and turn there with me. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 16. And you begin to see that Paul, in the book of Ephesians, lays out four very important points. Number one, Christ has all authority. Number two, the church is the body of Christ. Number three, therefore, as the church, believers have authority. And here's number four. Christ operates through the church in the earth. Amen. This is what Ephesians, the book of Ephesians tells us. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 16. If you're there, say I'm there. Amen. Do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. So we're going to get a revelation of how Paul prays and what Paul is praying about for the church. Verse 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of the glory, may give to you spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. Verse 18, in the eyes of your understanding, being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of your calling. And what are the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints. Verse 19, and what is the exceeding greatness of His power toward us who believe. According to the working of His mighty power. That word power really should be translated authority. So we see here Paul says, I want you to be aware of something. And he really starts to emphasize this. He says, I want you to have the spirit of wisdom. I want you to have the spirit of revelation. I want you to have the spirit of knowledge. I want the eyes of your understanding to be opened accordingly so that you could know what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe. So if you're a believer, there's something I want you to be aware of, Paul says. I want you to get this. Paul says. He says, I want you to have wisdom about it. I want you to have revelation about it. I want you to have understanding about it. I want you to have knowledge about it. Because if you don't know it, if you don't understand it, if you don't have a revelation of it, you can't walk in it. Amen. And Paul says, the principles I'm getting ready to tell you are so lofty and are so mighty that you're going to need a Holy Ghost anointing to get it. But you got to get it. And the church needs to get it. 
Paul says, I want the spirit of wisdom to come on you. I want the spirit of revelation to come on you. I want the spirit of knowledge and understanding to come on you. Because I want you to be enlightened about something. I want you to be enlightened about what is the exceeding greatness of his power operating in the lives of believers. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. You say, well, when did that happen? Happened at the, at the resurrection. I said it happened at the resurrection. Look in the next verse, verse 20, Ephesians 1 and 20. What is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Things, when, when God raised, when the Father raised Jesus from the dead, it started chain reaction of events. There was such power released right then. Because Jesus is the first fruits, the first to be raised with the glorified body. The first fruit. And, G and that just started such a release of power, of grace, of anointing. Hallelujah. Which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead. And then what did he do? He seated him on the right hand, on his right hand in heavenly places. Now, he seated him in the throne of Power. And when you're sitting in the throne of power, it is a settled thing. It's done at that point. It's been established at that point. When the king sits in his throne, his kingdom is established. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's what the throne means. It's power. There's no more debate. There's no more discussion. There's no more warfare. There's no more anything. The king is sitting in his throne. His kingdom is established. His dominion is established. His authority is established. When, so when the father raised the son from the dead and sat him on the right hand, on his right hand, that means the place of power, sat him on his right hand, Power was invested in his position. He has authority and power over everything. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 21. Back to verse 20. Seated him in the right hand in heavenly places. Verse 21. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this age but yes also in this age but also in that which is to come so he seated him in the in the place of power and that place is far above all other principality all other power all other might all other dominion and, and if there's anything that hasn't been named that he is above, just to make sure he's above every name that is named. Glory to God. He's above it all. Hallelujah. In this age and in the ages to come. So it's a settled deal. Jesus is sitting in the throne of power, settled, done, forevermore. Above all other powers and authorities and dominions verse 22 and he put all things under his feet and gave to him to be, and gave him to be head over all things to the church now we're coming into the picture so Jesus was raised from the dead Jesus sat in the throne of power now Paul starts talking about the church what is the church which is his body verse 23 which is his body so he's the head of the church he is Christ is the head of the church, but we are the body of Christ. Hallelujah. The fullness of him who fills all and all. So Paul does not stop there. Paul says, I'm going to tell you something that is going to get you excited, is going to cause you to, to have a paradigm shift in your thinking. It is going to be absolutely fantastic. You're going to need wisdom to get it, and revelation to get it, and knowledge to get it, and understanding to get it. But listen, this is what Paul says. Listen to me. Where Jesus is currently seated, it's above all other power and authority that can be named, and that will never change. And that will never change. 
He's the head. He's the head, but the church is his body. Now, the, the head doesn't get resurrected by itself. The head gets resurrected with a body. And Paul now starts talking about the operation of the body in the anointing of Christ. You say, we are the body of Christ. We're not the body of Jesus. He's sitting in heaven. But we are the body of Christ. Just as Christ is the anointed one and his anointing, that's us. That's us. We are the body of Christ, specifically stated in Scripture. And so, therefore, we have a common experience with Jesus. That's why Paul said in Galatians 2 and 20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So Galatians said, I, I've been crucified with Christ. I've had the same experience that Christ had. When he was on the cross, I was on the cross. My sins went to the cross with him. I am in Christ by faith. I am in Christ. And so therefore, I have been crucified with Christ. And my sin life remains nailed to the cross. I don't have to walk around in that anymore. That would be good news right there. We don't have to go any farther. But Paul does go farther. He goes way farther than that. Look with me again in, in Ephesians chapter 2. You see, we're just marching through Ephesians here. We're marching through Ephesians. We, we found out at the beginning of Ephesians, Paul says, I'm praying that you get a revelation some, of something. Then we read a little farther. The revelation, he says, I want you to get is that Christ is enthroned in heaven and he is seated in authority above all other authorities in the universe. Now, watch this. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 5. Even when we were dead in sins, uh, he made us alive together with Christ. So everybody say together. together. For by grace you have been saved. Verse 6. And raised us up together. Everybody say together. together. And made us sit together. Everybody say together. together. In heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So Okay, I was crucified with Christ. I was made alive in Christ. I was raised up together with Christ. And where am I now? I am seated. <laughs> Are you getting it? I am seated together with Christ in heavenly places. Now, where is he seated? Far above all principality and power. Above every name that can be named. I'm seated with him. I'm seated with him. And not just as a visitor, but as a part of his body. I'm, I'm not, I, I, haven't, I haven't just squeezed myself in. When I'm sitting in my lazy boy chair at home, one of the dogs will come and wants to squeeze herself in beside me because she likes to sit there. And she squeezes herself in. And then another dog comes up and jumps up on my lap and sleeps on my lap. So I got a dog squeezed in and I got a dog on top of me. But that's not what we're talking about here. That, I said that's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is that we are seated with him in heavenly places because we are his body. Hallelujah. Well, it's somewhat figurative in language, but it's actually true in reality in authority. He's, his authority is established forever, far above. We're seated with him in that throne of authority, so we're operating in the same authority that is far above. You have authority above the power of sickness. You have authority above lack, limit, and loss. You have authority above all manners of oppression and depression. You have authority, someone should be saying amen. amen. You have authority above every name that is named. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now, go to Ephesians 3 and verse 19. To know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled. Ooh, 
rule. Well, certainly the body should be filled with all the fullness of God if we are the body of Christ. Doesn't that make sense? Verse 20, now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. There is an operation of power in your life working in you right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To him be the glory in the church by Jesus Christ to all generations forever and ever. And everybody said amen. Amen. Now, we go back to what Paul prayed. Paul's, isn't this a tremendous revelation? Paul said, Jesus has all authority and you're sitting in Christ. That means that you can look at every opposing force that's coming against you and you can say, uh-uh, you got nothing on me. You have no ability against me. You have no power against me. You have no right against me. I'm seated in the seat of power and glory. But Paul says you've got to get that revelation. You've got to understand that because you may have that and not be walking in that. You, you might have access to that but may not have access to yourself and taken advantage of that. So in Ephesians 6 and 12, he says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but we do wrestle against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness in this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Uh, that is true. We do wrestle against those things. But it says, host of wickedness in spiritual, in heavenly places, in heavenly places. But we've already read in previous chapter that we're seated in the heavenlies above all other. Amen. Above all other. So even though we wrestle against these things, they cannot possibly win against us because we have a higher authority than they do. Hallelujah. Believers must walk in their authority. And this is why I was listening, I was doing some research on this and came across a treasure trove of uh, tapes and whatnot from Kenneth Hagin. And Kenneth Hagin says, listen, this is what the church needs to understand about spiritual authority. It's something that God is doing in you. It's something that God is doing through you. God, the head, Jesus, the head of Christ, operates through the body of Christ, and he uses his body to operate in the earth. And so we, as the body of Christ, must operate in the authority that we have. You don't hang around and just wait, God, do something. God is waiting for us to do something. You say, you know, just hang on until Jesus shows up. No, Jesus has already showed up. He's in you. You have his authority. Hallelujah. Turn back to Luke 10 and 19. Believers must walk in their authority. Say, I will walk in my authority. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy. Who does he give the authority to? To us. Yeah, to us. He, he says, I give it to you, verse 20. Don't rejoice in this, that spirits are subject to who? To you. Jesus gave us authority. He gave us power over all the power of the enemy. He said, I give it to you. And spirits are subject to you. Look with me in Mark chapter 16, verse 17. And these signs shall follow those who believe. Say, that's me. Say, I'm a believer. In my name, they will cast out devils. The, the first thing that they do in his name is cast out devils. Who does it? The church does it. They will. He didn't say, wait till I come down from on high. I'll do it for you. No, he says, I'm, I've already given you the authority. I've already given you the power. You're seated in heavenly places in me. So I want you to do it. You're the body of Christ. You do it. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, that takes the question marks out of our prayer. You know, God, how should I pray over this? 
How, no, God says you should be demanding, you should be declaring, you should be speaking to that thing, and you should be telling that devil, you get on out of here. You tell that sickness, you get on out of here. Listen, what did it say about Jesus? Is that how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. The devil brings plenty of oppressions in our life, but we are to rise up and say, uh-uh, not here. I don't receive it. You can't put that on me. You have no power to put that on me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. These signs shall follow those that believe. That's, that's us. In my name they will. They will. They will. They will. The believer will. They will cast out demons. So on and so forth. They will lay hands on the sick. And they will recover hallelujah hallelujah Matthew 16 and 18 Jesus said Peter who do people say that I am who do you say that I am thou art the Christ the son of the living God well said Peter upon this rock of revelation I shall build my church go ahead and put it up there again I also say to you that you are Peter and on this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Verse 19. Matthew 18, 19. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Who does he give them to? You. To us. To the church. To the church that he's building. Hey church, I'm going to give you some keys. Hallelujah. I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind shall be bound. Whatever you loosed shall be loosed. That sickness tries to get on you, bind it up. I don't receive that in the name of Jesus. That oppression tries to jump on you. That, that spirit of lack and limit and loss tries to jump on you. You say, no way, I don't receive that in the name of Jesus. I've got keys to the kingdom. I've got the authority, glory to God. I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. I have all power over these things in the name of Jesus. I don't receive any of that junk. Hallelujah. Anybody getting this tonight? Are we doing okay? James 4 and 7. Therefore submit to God. Resist the devil. He will flee from you. The word flee means to run in terror. Uh, resist the devil and he will flee from who? You. He'll flee from me. He has to run. Because he doesn't have any power to resist you. When you resist him, he's got to go. You say, no, I don't receive it. I resist you. I push back against you. I'm not letting you in the door. No. Hallelujah. No. Everybody say, no. 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 I resist you, devil. And the only thing that he can do is run. He will flee from you. Run in terror. Ephesians 4 and 27. Don't give place to the devil. Don't give permission for the devil to get in your stuff. Get in your life, get in your head, get in your vocabulary. Don't give the devil permission. Amen. It says, nor give place to the devil. 1 Peter 5 and 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Verse 9. Resist him, steadfast in your faith knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Everybody say, resist him. Resist. Steadfast in your faith. Well, what is your faith telling you? Is, is your faith saying, I am seated with Christ in heavenly places, in the place of authority and power, and as the body of Christ, I can then operate in the power that is in Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 And this is something that we have to grow in. Every one of us has to grow in this because too very often we said, you know, I don't, I don't see what I want to see. It's not, it's not that it's not available. It's not that God doesn't want us to have it. It's just that we haven't reached out to get it yet. We haven't exercised our authority yet. And we have to develop our faith 
to exercise our authority. Colossians 1 and 13, he has delivered us from the power, the authority of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of his dear son. So we've been delivered out of his power. Now we're in a new kingdom. We're in a kingdom that we have power over the other kingdom, praise God. And we need to just, we just need to walk in that revelation. Let me close on one, two verses, Ephesians 1 and 22. He has put all things under his feet, say that's me, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body. Now, what is under the feet of the body? All the principalities and powers of darkness, all the rulers of darkness of this age, all the powers of wickedness in heavenly places, all those things are under the feet. Where are the feet located? In the body. Who is the body of Christ? We are. I said we are. So we have to operate in that authority. Last verse, Ephesians 5 and 17. For if by one man's offense death reigned through one, much more shall those receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign, the Amplified says, will reign as kings in this life through the one, Jesus Christ. You see, it starts out when we're young in our, in our faith, it starts out with um, pray for me, pray for me, I'm under attack. And then as we mature in our faith, it goes pray with me, pray with me. Because the, the prayer of agreement is the prayer of power. The Bible says in, in Matthew 18, if any two on earth agree as touching anything that they should ask, it shall be done for them of our Father who is in heaven. So we go for pray for me to pray with me, because I know what authority I have. I'm just looking for agreement. Hallelujah. I know what authority I have. And then we go from pray with me to listen to me pray and declare my authority over the devil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, as we, as, as we grow up in it, when we're young in the faith, we're like, man, I don't even know what to do. I don't know what to say. Pray for me. Somebody pray for me. And then as we start to mature a little bit in our faith, is it's like, well, I know what to say. I, I'm just looking for prayer partners. Yeah, let's pray in agreement about this. And then we get strong in the faith. And it's like, hey, listen to this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to run the devil into the ground. You, you stand and watch and listen to me declare God's goodness over my life and the power of God manifest in my life. And I'm going to walk in victory and in this life I will reign as kings as through the one Jesus Christ did you get anything out of this tonight praise the Lord let's all stand together hallelujah